Hey guys, XR Merrick here, and today I'm doing a tier list video. I'm going to be uh, ranking the different decks uh, competitively uh, that are in the meta right now, and uh, just want to get a good look at them. Um, some deck tier lists were made a little while ago, but that was before the ban list, and since then we've had a tournament, um, and it was kind of all over the place, but it, I think it's very interesting to look at them now and kind of place where I think they are. So let's uh, let's get started. The first one that we've got here is Heel Stall. Um, Heel Stall is a really interesting deck. Um, it focuses on kind of playing slowly until your opponent just loses, while you just kind of keep up on mana, keep up on spirits. Um, so I think it's a really interesting deck in that way, and uh, I think it's tier two. This could maybe be tier one, depending on how it does, but. I think with the, the limits, it got hurt a little bit, but I still think it's very good. Um, it just kind of has a grindy game plan that um, a, a lot of decks don't really have a great way to deal with. Um, dropping Sluggles and Quackles and Dratoglas and all of that just really, really lengthens how long you're, you're going to be playing the game, which is very, very good for that kind of deck. Um, Next up, we've got Thunder. Now this, I'm gonna put immediately just in, in tier one. Uh, there's like a few different builds of Thunder, which I do want to talk about the different ones, but I think they're all pretty even. So I'm just gonna group them all together and put them in tier one, because it's just, they're, they're all amazing. Um, and the three different variations are Arcolith, uh, Vol Tempest, and Sonicore. Um, Arclith won the whole tournament, the whole webcam tournament that just passed, I believe. I think it won. Yeah. And then both in the top eight were also the Sonicore and the Voltempest list. The Sonicore was in top four and the Voltempest was just in top eight. Um, but I honestly think that any of them could have won it. I think that Thunder is a very, very strong deck to what I'm playing currently. It's a very, very strong deck, and it's what I'm playing currently. Um, each list kind of has its own things. Uh, Arcolith is, I feel like, a little bit lower to the ground and just kind of uses Arcolith to, you know, re-enchant onto Astrabbit and Toxion and back onto the Zeus and all that kind of stuff to just be able to swing for kind of big damage and re-enchant and kind of keep a, like a game plan where you're kind of looping your, your resources. Sonicore is going to be mostly focused on just playing low to the ground until you go drop Sonicore and then hopefully that they can't do anything. I think, well, it's the best, it's, it's one of the better ones. I definitely think with people just playing Cryoblast now, it's going to be a lot harder to get that out games two and three, but early on in a game one, if you can just drop this, it's going to be very, very hard out. Uh, and lastly, Vol Tempest, which is what I'm playing. Uh, it's it's so strong. Um, being able to, it, like, I've had it where someone just, like, played Rabbit, didn't send any back row pass, and I just was able to just go into Vol Tempest on turn, my turn two, turn three total. Um, and just... They couldn't, they'd lost, they like scooped after that because they couldn't do anything. There was no reasonable way to out it because I would just burn them every turn. So that's what's really, really cool about Volt Tempest. Um, another thing is all of these decks have Quackle, they all have Astrabbit, they all have Jolton, um, they all have Elechik. Just really, really solid cards. Uh, Jolton makes all of your guys fives because it just searches out. That and Toxion, Elegic, Jolton are all four attack, so you're basically just playing fives at that point. But you've got Race to the Top, you've got other stuff that you can go into, which is why I think Thunder is the best deck right now. It is so incredibly strong. Moving on, we've got Earth Nexus, which I'm going to throw up here in Tier 1. 
this is next deck's best deck. Um, Mudlet is so unbelievably strong, and so is Eklinx. Being able to pop things, pop back row, just off of a Nexus is really, really good. It's repeatable, which is solid. And then Mudlet being able to just switch things to attack or defense is, is, is really good. I mean, you see Eddie in not every deck, but a lot of decks um, just as a good, good stuff card. And so being able to have a card that just says, I'm going to do this every single turn is just really, really, really solid. Um, on top of that, Bloom, Bloom is kind of a, an all right card, but being able to move all of your spirits around is just good. It triggers Mudlet, it triggers Clovey if you're playing it. It can switch Moth Station to attack if you've got the, the, uh, the Clovey, and then that's all just for her. It's, if you've got the Mudlet, you can switch the station to attack, and then that's all like free because you just rotate all of the spirits around. Um, so it's it's really really good. Um, just a really solid deck. Um, I think as it goes on, people will try and innovate on it a little bit. Um, but as of right now, I think it's I think it's really good. Next up, we've got Wind Toolbox. Now this deck, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna put it here in tier two, but this could maybe even move down. I love Wind, and I think Wind is good, but Wind Toolbox, it, I'm having an issue where I don't see people winning with it. Um, I think, it's not bad. I think not having the removal is, is a little bit harder for it. Um, but I don't think it's bad. So I'm going to put it in tier two. I just, I know some people like kind of run out of stuff at some point and just go, wait, how do I win? Um, which I completely understand. Um, which is why I like the wind thunder burn deck a little bit better because being able to just constantly burn and go into full tempest is feels a lot more rewarding um, than just kind of tutoring out what you need at any point but they, they are different decks which is why i've separated them for this tier list um but yeah wind wind toolbox is, is all right i think it, it can definitely get some wins um i think not the most recent one, but the one before it. Maybe the most recent one as well. Um, I know the Wind Toolbox bubble. Um, so it, it definitely can perform. Uh, I just, I don't know if it has enough to close, close the gap at the end there. Next we've got is Fire Nexus. This is a hard one. I want to put this in tier two but I think I might just end up putting it in Rogue. I think this deck is cool. And much like other Nexus decks, I think it's cool if it sets up. Where I think the issue is, is I think that it doesn't set up well enough. Ash Rabbit is a good receiver. Comagma is a good receiver. But I don't think it's better than Mudlet. I don't think it's better than Toxic Swarm. Um, Kindleo is insane. I will admit, I, I when I've had people summon two Kindleo and just kind of pass them back and forth, uh, there was not a whole lot I could do to out it. Um, but I don't think, as a deck, it does enough. Exalt Flare is cool, but it also requires that you run some more bricky cards, and then just kind of, it, it, it's not as good, I don't think. Um, but it's not bad. I, I, I definitely see this as playable. I play against it sometimes at locals, and I definitely think it's good, but I don't think it's crazy, right? Uh, next we've got Bears. 
Um, I know Distant Corner made top four with this. This this is a dog shit deck. <laughs> it's not dog shit, but it's it's not great. I like I I went and I played it at locals. Um, I haven't looked too much at Distant Coder's list, um, but I was talking with uh, Caleb, who was also on the other restaurants, um, talking with him about my bears list. Uh, and while there were some things that I could change and whatnot, it was mostly similar to the list that he had, which, you know, they're kind of in a group together, so it makes sense if their lists were similar and they're talking about it. I just don't think it's that good. It did not win a game the night that I played it. It may have won a game, but I don't think it won a match. It, it was just not performing at all. It just didn't do anything. Um, dropping an Earthseer is really cool until they have anything bigger than a three or anything that is back row, because then you just lose. Like you just go, oh, normal summon, they go, get rid of it. And they go, cool, I, I don't do anything now. Don't poke the bear is really good, but I mean, if you're just going like Earthseer pass, because I don't want to attack because I think you have shield and that's not really good, you know? It just it just because it doesn't do anything, I think, unfortunately. And unfortunately as well, the three costs are just kind of terrible. So you don't want to be playing them regardless. So you're just kind of focusing on the one drops. And I don't think those are good enough to do what it needs to do. Um, obviously Distant Coder is a good player. I believe that he can make it with bears again, but I don't have faith <laughs> in that deck at all. Um, next we've got is <laughs> 15s. Um, also someone said it was Poseidon Nexus Turbo. I don't know, it's it's rogue. It's, it's cool, it's a cool concept. I like it. I think I saw the Law Yu-Gi-Oh um, over on Caster's Corner play kind of a heal burn version of that deck, or a heal stall version of that deck, sorry. Um, and I think that that was good. He didn't drop Pantera in that whole video, but it's just kind of heal stall with like big brick, which is probably fine. Um, and like, they can remove it if they just kind of like you know, shield or PTA, but then they're paying for it, so you're like, oh, well, I haven't put too much resources in this, I just kind of ascended it, and now you have to remove it for four, so it's beneficial. I think it's good, I think it's, I, I don't think it's bad, but it's definitely rogue. I think it's just a worse version of, like, heal stall. I think the more, like, dedicated trying to get Pentair out, I think are gonna be worse than that, because I think it's just gonna be kind of bricky kind of slow, or not not as not as good as it needs to be when you're just summoning like a misenchanted Pantera. Next we've got um, Blazerous OTK. I love this deck. <laughs> um, where it is in the tier list... I'm gonna put it in Rogue. I definitely think it's a Rogue deck. I don't think it beats some of these up here in tier 2 and tier 1, so I think it's probably rogue. Um, it's it's so cool. I mean, it, it it's so cool because you don't need to commit anything. Um, the only thing you really need to commit is like a Helios in the back row, which if they can remove it, they can remove it, but you know, not all decks can do that, right? If I'm playing against Earth Nexus, it's a little bit harder. If I'm playing against Wind Toolbox, they can search Peel Gust, that's a little bit harder, but um, at the end of the day, I don't, being able to just like, what, what I've done when I play it is I just go, you know, Ask Drive It, Elchik, Swaltuga, you know, and just kind of sit on that for like three, four, five, six turns, and they just kind of go, oh yeah, that's, that's just a five, like I, it's hard for me to get over that. And then I'm just sitting there like using Nog or using drops to like search all my pieces and then at the end of the day, then I just flip Helios and they die. Like it, 
they, they just die. So there's, it, it's, it's really cool in that regard. Um, but if they can catch on, it can be very hard. Um, I think so. That's why I'm gonna put it in Rogue. I think once there's a little bit more innovation, I think it will be very, very good. Um, if there's any way to draw more or set up better, I think that it will be very, very solid. Um, there are many games that I won by just sitting around for like five turns and not doing anything, so that's my thoughts. I think it's rogue. It could go up uh, if if we if people kind of like hammer it out and work on it. Uh, Faragast. I'm gonna put this in rogue. I I think it is fine. I'm gonna actually move it down here. I think it will be very, very good once Midrise comes out. Uh, I think it just doesn't... It's fine. There, it, it is very good against some decks, very bad against other decks. I think that it is a good card. I think the amount of Spirits that you need to spend to get this out is a little too much sometimes. And I think that's the main issue. But I think once there are some easier ways to turbo this out, it'll be a lot better. Um, so Rogue for now, but once Moonrise comes out, I could very see, easily see it top of tier two um, with already some of the reveals that we've seen. So um, keep your eye on Faragust. Um, next is Wind Thunderburn. I love this deck. Um, I'm gonna put it right up here. I'm actually gonna, seeing some of these decks that are in the rogue category, I'm gonna move Fire Nexus up. Um, it's kind of just in this middle spot, but I do think it is better than some of these decks. But anyways, Wind Thunderburn. Uh, Wind Thunderburn is, is insane. Um, I think it's really, really good. It's, it's very tightless sometimes, but um, I think it's solid. I think it does what Win Toolbox does, but more solid game plan. The times where its game plan is, is bad in the matchup, like where you don't want to be really summoning Volt Tempest against some decks, um, you can just side into more Win Toolbox stuff. It's got a lot of adaptability, and I think that dropping like Toxion, Toxiswarm, just multiple, you know turns in a row is just very good. It can burn them very quickly. Being able to exalt air and nexus off, burn them for more, um, is just good. I, I, I think getting rid of their resources while also like going even is just really, really solid. Um, so that's why I'm putting it there. It probably could go lower, but I'm a, I'm a little biased all the Um Next up is Solar Nexus. I think this deck is good. I'm gonna put it tier two. Um, I think it is a good deck. I think there's a lot of different builds that you can do with it. I think that's where people are struggling the most right now is figuring out how to properly build it. Um, I know Dialysis list. Um, I think that's his, his name, which, which was before the ban list. I think that was a very, very solid list, playing like Super Mall to just have like a guy on field and cast the Golden Fleece from a uh, deck for free, basically. I think that's kind of like a nice little like stun strategy where you can just kind of sit and then wait and then drop Celestio and then it's kind of game over from there. Um, but I think it's very, very solid. I think being able to foretell and like stack your deck is very good. Um, and all of the searchability for all of your pieces is just, it's so good. Um, so that's why I think it's up here. Uh, fives. Um, fives is all right. It's, it's good stuff. 
Um, I'll put up. I'll put top of tier two. I think it's a good deck. It's kind of just the same as heal stall, where you're just playing guys and getting advantage off of it. Um, because any guy that you drop in fives is just gonna contest whatever they have, and they'll probably have to pay more to remove your thing. That's the theory behind it. Um, and it's good. I think it will definitely go down as time goes on and more strategies are fleshed out. Um, and as people stop playing it, people will stop playing it because it's not very exciting and it's been played since base set. So I think as more strategies come out, people are just like, oh, let me play this because that's more interesting. So. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the idea there. Um, All right, I had to move from where I was at, so we're outside now. Um, next deck is is Fun Guide. I think this is is just Force Fire Nexus, but I think it's got some legs. I think that it can be very very solid, and I think that the kind of dupe block style, where you're just kind of protecting your guys from attacking, is is very good. Um, I think it unfortunately loses to uh, removal um, because it's only protecting yourself from attack, but I think uh, it can be very good. I saw one player at Locals who was using that and um, the M M Phoenix, the Phoenix card from base set, um, using that and the Brontwisp to kind of recycle for like an infinite Nexus Bank, which was really cool. So that is, that's my thoughts on it. I think it's all right. It's rogue, but it's, it's a cool deck. It's definitely worth playing or checking out. So, um, Dracking. Dracking is, is good. The Dracking is good. I'm going to put it up here. I think it's a very solid deck. I think it's better than Water Nexus. It's kind of different. This one, it's a little bit more aggro, kind of more mid-range. Um, I think Rock and a Hard Place, people say that it's worth Earthquake. I think giving the opponent's choice is bad, but I think it's kind of balanced by the fact that it is just good. <laughs> um, so, it, it, I mean, you're either removing a rune or you're removing a, a guy. Either way, it's gonna be beneficial for you. Most of the most of the back row is gonna cost like two anyways most of the time, I feel like, so you're kind of just going even in that way. It's better than Thunderstorm, for sure. Um, and if they choose to get rid of the guy, it's good. If you got Drakid already on the field, then it's just like, well, I might as well get rid of the guy, otherwise so they're just gonna take it. So it's like already just free removal in that sense, so. I think it's good. I think it's a good deck. I think it's pretty consistent, um, and I think playing Eddie is good. Eddie is just a really good card, so. Um, moving on, we've got Snowman. I think this deck is not good. <laughs> I, I tried to watch some people play it. Um, I'll look into it more, but I, I just, I don't think I get it. I think Morlith is fine, um, but... I don't think the deck really has the legs to do what it needs to do. I think it won, or it, it placed in the tournament because it was more so unknown rather than being good. I could be completely wrong. This one, this one, I feel like I, I can admit that at all. I can be wrong on. Um, just because there's not enough knowledge about it yet. I'll move it to the top of rogue because it, it could do either. I, I will say, compared to <laughs> Fire Nexus, Fire Nexus has, didn't see any play at all in the most recent webcam tournament, which I think is crazy. But regardless, Morlith is, it's a fine card. I, I just don't think the deck does enough. That's, that's it, really. Um, I think it's got a cool... I think it's got a cool advantage engine, but I, I with like the more frost cards and like Q and A and milling, 
but I don't think it just does enough, unfortunately. Next we've got... Next we've got... Uh, heal stall, or uh, not heal stall, um, pretty much. Uh, we've got Water Nexus, um, and Water Nexus is is good. Let me move this down because I don't think it's better. The Water Nexus is just a solid deck, but um, it's it's kind of lost favor after Draken came out because I think some builds of that are just better, but I don't think it's bad. I think it's just a lot more control heavy. You're going to be focusing on waiting two or three turns, focusing on um, summoning out either a Chronodile or a Curbus, um, and I don't think that's bad, but I don't think it's what you need. So that's my thoughts on it. Um, it's all right, though. All right, next we've got um, Wyvee. We've got Wasp Ivy. Um, and this deck is... It's alright. <laughs> I'll put it at the bottom of tier 2. Um, I have a friend who has been playing it and has been doing pretty well with it, I think. But I don't know if it has enough. It kind of just loses... If I remember, it kind of just loses to Cryoblast or Race to the Top. Um, or any, like, an eddy, a mudlet, which is kind of the issue with it. It's good because it can just be special summoned and it isn't affected by counter runes, but a good player will know to just use your counter runes on the Cynector. I think that's the first one. Um, and not worry about it past that, and then just hold Invoke in your runes in your hand until they summon out the Wasp Ivy. I mean, even if they do that and they equip it with Bag of Winds, you've still got, like, Eddie and Mudlet and, like, summoning, like, a Vol Tempest or anything like that to just kind of get rid of what they're playing. Um, so I don't think it's that crazy, but I do think it just kind of poses some decks um, because it is just kind of a, a big guy that is a, a Towers. Um, I just think it's worse than, like, Tempest or Sonic Core. Moving on, we've got the last deck, which is Rhinosect. Um, Rhinos, Rhinosect, I'll move to the top of tier two. I think this deck is really, really good. Um, the main issue with it is a consistency issue. Um, if you don't draw a Rhinosect, it's bad. If you draw too many Rhinosect, it's bad. But I think they balance it out pretty well. Um, and I know there's two different variations. There's kind of a Frost Nexus and a Cryo Scorch variation. Um, but I think that Frost Nexus cards are fine. I just don't think they do enough. And I think the kind of lower to the ground version that the Cryo Scorch version comes with is a lot, a lot more solid. Um, I, as someone who I played against Hunter Surge, who recently just topped the webcam tournament with the Rhino Sect list. Um, it's very, very solid. Being able to drop um, the Cryoling and go into Cryovern or just go into Rhino Sect, I mean, it's just really, really good. Um, it keeps up a lot of pressure, summons a lot of big bodies. Um, Rhino Sect is really, really good at removing opponent's creatures. Um, and on top of that, Rhino, Rhynymph is, is just very, very good removal. Um, being able to suppress a, an Elastral like that is, is, is good, and especially against, you know, Sonicor, Vol Tempest, Cynec, uh, not Cynec, um, Wasp Ivy. Those kind of decks, it's really, really good, because you can just like it doesn't target so you just remove it to the back row and it's 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 really good removal in that in that sense um so yeah this is this is the list um some of these could move around i'd be willing to make like a t2 
tier 1.5 and just kind of put some of these in that space. Probably like, um, probably like Rhino Sect to like Draking, I could put in like a tier 1.5. Um, just kind of those four, because I don't think, I'm saying tier one, tier two. I don't think a lot of these decks are really that far apart. Um, like, I think there's a difference, like a strong difference between tier one and rogue, but it, I think like tier one to tier two is not that different, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I really had fun doing this kind of video. Um, make sure to like and subscribe and um i've got a lot more videos coming out in the future so uh so yeah thank you